It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Bears and the 49ers. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the so-called Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Today, boy, what a matchup. Two NFL franchises with so much history, so much tradition, getting set to do battle here as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Here's the Australian-born punter Mitch Wisnowski to get things going. And we are underway from Santa Clara. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. Throwing to start the drive, Williams. And this intercepted on the first play of the game. To the end zone, a pick six for the 49er D as they score the touchdown. So a big defensive play there on the opening drive, no less, as they make the interception and bring it back to the score. And I think that's a signal for how this defense wants to play. They want to be disruptive, and you know they're going to take some chances. Well, sometimes it can burn you, but right there, it paid off. Jake Moody now for the point after. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. 
Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now they'll throw here. Out of the gun. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. To throw on third down, Williams. They throws it on the move but can't connect as that falls incomplete. But following the play here, now we've got an injury. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Fourth down, Chicago brings out Trenton Gill. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. Leading them out, someone who took the league by storm last year is the most famous Mr. Irrelevant ever from Iowa State. It's Brock Purdy. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. Shifts by him. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Here's Purdy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. And throwing here, Purdy. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him the 
third down conversion, five yards on the play. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Now, former six-round pick, it's Elijah Mitchell. Well, he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. He was blown up in the backfield. Fourth down now after a loss of two. Sometimes I think cornerbacks can benefit from the fact that quarterbacks might just forget about the idea that they might be near the line of scrimmage. How about the anticipation there sneaking in and making a big play in the backfield? On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. But now the Bears coming out as they get ready. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Up to the 20. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Williams to throw on second down. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Kamet. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. So a roughing the passer penalty there, CD. And we know that these pass rushers love to get after rookie quarterbacks, but they've still got to do it within the scope of the rules. And that time, the hit came just a little bit too late. And the official won't even think twice about pulling his flag on that one. A little short pass. This is Everett. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, Boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. Looking to throw. Williams complete on the quick throw to Moore. Short completion, just four yards. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in the... Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked up by Diamondo Lenore. And the 49ers will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. Second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen.
So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Now Purdy. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he's brought down. 15 yards is the pick up there in the drive starting very nicely. First down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. On first down, Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Purdy. That's caught by Ayuk on the slam. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? Ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. His way into the end zone for a touchdown. Christian McCaffrey taking it in from four yards out. And the 49ers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. An extra point try now for Moody. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that drives seven plays in length. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Khalil Herbert to return it from his end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive 
But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw. Williams throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Rough incompletions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense put them to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm, trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. He'll take it at the 42. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Christian McCaffrey and his 49er teammates back onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Got a man. That's Ayu. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath round, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So first and 10 now from the 30. Play action. Now Purdy. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. They go play action here. Purdy. Sack him back right around the 41-yard line. That winds up pushing it back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. That's a step in the right direction defensively here because you're facing this sizable deficit. They're going to need more plays like that. A good sack, though, good effort there. And what you're hoping is, as you said, a step in the right direction. And that means it's something to build on. So you get the first one, and hopefully that can ignite them. And now they can make a few more plays and get back into this game. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Brandon, you're never quite sure what the side judge or the field judge is going to rule there. That was awfully close, but in the end, he says it passed over the one-yard line, and that's where they're going to mark it out. I mean, you can see it right there, right? See him walking up the sideline? Told him to stop right there at the one. Now.
Now Williams to throw from his end zone. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. 41 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Thanks to that last play, a little more room to operate. First and 10 at the 18. Looking to throw. Williams. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well. So give some credit to the defense. Here's Williams. Throwing again on second and 10. And his throw is going to be incomplete. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but he did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. The Bears on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Back to throw. Williams. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They definitely got to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that'll move the ball downfield. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Take it at the 37. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking. Usually the best way to maintain control. There for the tackle, Jacob Martin. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Back to throw, Purdy. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. Jennings was the one he was looking for, and that'll make it third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. sack. T.J. Edwards gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards and it's also fourth down now. Okay I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. Here's Jones. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They'll begin with much more advantageous starting field position than they did on their last drive as they come up here first and 10.
On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Williams now looking to throw on second down. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Fred Warner. And the Niners are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. On first down, they look downfield, and it's complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A gain of 37. Well, he looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He has such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. It delivers a big play here for this offense. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Purdy looking to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Purdy sets up to throw again. And he hauls it in, in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Kyle Juszczyk from 10 yards out. And the 49ers take a three-touchdown lead. Well, I don't think that we're ready yet to say the route is on, but they have certainly looked near flawless here in this first half, and now an extra point away from making it 21-0. Yeah, and your experience led you to say that because we have both seen those 21 to nothing leads come and go in this league, but this one feels pretty darn secure. And here's the other part. Even when people chip away at it, it forces you into being almost perfect on the other side, doesn't it, in order to try to mount a comeback. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Chicago offense set to get started. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Now, that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit, and they get one here in the passing game. Williams on first and 10. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. 
as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Second down and three. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Finding more on the out route for the completion. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. They'll look to throw again. He'll find Swift out of the backfield. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it's second down. And that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. So from just across the midfield stripe, here's second and nine. Again, he'll drop to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Williams loses the football. And this ball recovered by the offense. But remember, they cannot advance it here in the final two minutes of the half. So this will be blown dead. And it'll come back to the spot of the fumble. The fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. So we've hit halftime here in Santa Clara with the 49ers out in front as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a fine performance in the first half from the former Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy. He's got a touchdown through the air as his guys have raced out to a gigantic early lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It's the 49ers out in front, and they will get the football first as well as we are back and started in the second half. This taken in at the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And the 49er offense set to go to begin quarter number three.
Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line. First and 10 at their own 27. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's caught out right by Jennings. From the 33, here's a second down and four. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third down, here's Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Purdy off the play fake. Gets this one to use check. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. and They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. I think they tried to fool him on that one. You know, being able to throw the ball to the fullback position, no one was fooled on that play. No, lost yardage. You think they should yank that one from the playbook, at least uh, for the time being? <laughs> I, think you, I think what you do is you take it out and you evaluate it next week in practice. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Partner was a definite passing down, but he was able to leak out and pick up some good yardage, even though the coverage was excellent. Maybe it's not exactly how they drew it up, but he still got a big chunk of yardage on second down. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And he will get this to the midfield stripe, but that's not going to be enough. He's a few yards short. Well, seven yards on the carry there, but now they're staring at fourth down. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Now Williams on first down. A little short pass. This is Everett. Only able to gain a couple there at its second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down, Swift. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. 
from the gun on third down. Williams has completed to Steven Carlson. And he will have the Bears first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here's Williams throwing on first down. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he's brought down. A nice little juke move that preceded it, but not much thereafter. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that will bring up second down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. This will be fielded at the 17. Called out a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And they will take over first and 10. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line. First and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. A big play there for the Niners. 41 yards. Everything's been going right here in this one. This offense, they've been in complete control from the outset. And here's another big play. These kind of routes have been open all game long, and they continue to take advantage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Purdy. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in his own blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Second and ten here as we roll along in quarter number three from Santa Clara. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. The tight end, Kennel, has it on the left side. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll find Ayuk open right side. And he is not going to get to the marker as they stop him short at the 14. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. And that big game may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might now consider going for it on fourth down. And his kick is good. And the route is on. It's 24 to nothing. 
Only three points there, but I got to think, at this point in the third quarter, that's all you're really looking for. And right now, the lead is three touchdowns and three two-point conversions. So you and I both know a huge order for the best of teams. And from what we've seen so far, hard to believe that that's a likely scenario. Three two-point conversions? That's difficult. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Williams throw complete here to commit. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 43. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. If he's their best threat on offense, use your number one cover guy on defense. It doesn't matter about size. They have had him locked up. That just his first catch of the game. Big reason why they're down. Here's second and three. Back to throw again. Give him another one right back to Allen. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Operating from the gun, Williams going back to Allen. He's got him again. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. 
A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is caught. He hits more. And he is going to have the Bears first down. And they pick it up rather easily. A gain of nine on fourth and two. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. 53 yards rushing for him now to this point. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Ball on the eight, it's second and four. Once again, it's Swift. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. DeAndre Swift. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Bears are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. That's caught. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone. And that cuts the lead a bit further. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the 49er hands team does its job. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical First down, this is McCaffrey. Oh, that's just not fair, and now run to run. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. First down, San Francisco, the pick up 14 yards. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And how about the burst here to begin the drive? Another big gain on the ground. This one good for 17 more. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback hey no time to be a hero we're not going to throw it here 
Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Here's second and seven. McCaffrey running up the middle. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll run again. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. McCaffrey is in. Touchdown, 49ers. Well, we talked a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Now Moody for the PAT. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. A drive that time of six plays. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Now second and three. Looking to throw. Williams. That pass complete to Moore. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Well, these guys are not going to go out with their tails between their legs. They're going to keep taking their shots until the clock's at triple zeros. But that one, like a lot of others, winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll look to throw again. He'll fire deep, looking for more. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Looks like they're going to keep throwing to the bitter end. This one's long since over, but give them credit. They're going to go down fighting. That one, incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Back to throw. Williams over the middle, and it's caught. Keenan Allen. 
And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 32-yard line. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. And he'll go right back to Allen. That's complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A big play there on the catch and run. 30 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Keenan Allen, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears get a bit closer. Coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. And teammates love to see that because they know that they miss blocks during a game, but they come back and make them later on. They miss tackles, right? They miss making plays, but the spotlight is magnified on your quarterback. And when he stands up to the pressure and comes back and throws a touchdown pass after throwing some picks earlier, they feel great about that guy. And likewise for him personally, as a rookie quarterback, has to give him more confidence. Now the Bears keeping the offense on the field and going for two. They'll look to throw. And he's going to get into the end zone for two. And they're back within two scores, down 15 now. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And whistles, and they take their final timeout with seven seconds left. Should be the final act of the ball game. So the victory here for San Francisco. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense.